Well, it's um, Thursday morning, the day before Good Friday, and the day where people are usually really excited because they're about to stop work and have a lovely long weekend with their family. If you're tuning in today live, that's wonderful. Um, I'll give a few minutes again just so that people get the chance to make all the adaptations needed to their equipment. Good morning, Donna. So it's a Thursday before the Good Friday whilst in social isolation. Um, we will be here tomorrow morning for a Good Friday finale. So we've got five people watching now. Just um, either say hi or just keep, keep showing me that you're tuning in. Um, if there are any problems, um, let's hope they come up now. Helen McGee, it's a hello and good morning to you. Um, the workout today will be with the band. Hello. And Lorna's watching. Grand. We're going to use the glute band. The glute band wants to be in the starting position, kind of a little bit halfway down the thigh. Um, I make no apology that this is an intense workout. The idea being that today I will um, be merciless and then tomorrow, good morning, Ken, good morning, Susan. Tomorrow I will be a little bit more mobilizing, stabilizing, stretching. It'll still be intense, but we've got Tom with us tomorrow. So it's that whole um, fantastic finale to Friday to week three. Emma Barrand, Emma, uh, Jonathan Eltoft, Emily Connor, lovely to hear and see, I can't hear you actually, to see that you're with me. Um, Jan Dack, good morning Jan, hopefully you're all really well. I'm assuming that unless you're watching this from your sick bed and you're just bored, <laughs> you're actually here to do a workout or you're assessing what the workout is before you do it. I'm always merciless, I don't know what you mean Helen. Um, just remember, while I'm obviously not in front of the camera and behind it, remember um, no pain, no discomfort in any joints. Good morning, Patricia. Lovely to have you with us too. I don't want pain. I want you to feel big muscles, really activated. And Tina, hello there. Big muscle activation with the breathing muscles. Good morning, Emma. Core stabilizing you. So you need to breathe as deeply as you can. If you don't have a glute band, remember all of this stuff will work without a glute band. And if in some parts of the workout, hi Sue, hope you're not in that queue at Morrison still. If you're doing the workout and you think, oh, I need a bit of stability here, then just reach for a work surface or go and find a chair or don't do that exercise. If in doubt, squat it out would be what I would say. Most of us know how to do our squats. Okay, so we've got 18 people watching live. I do believe it's just about gone 10. Um, as forever, I'm on my Tanya time. I'm going to get um, ready to go in front of the camera now. So hopefully get yourselves ready, people. You want your band? It can be on, ready to go. I'll try and teach slow and precise. You need to know that when I am on my maximum inhalers for my hay fever asthma, I'm a little bit, uh, so I will try and slow down, but it's not in my nature. So just setting up camera number two to make sure that we actually have a recording of this should the connection go and I get rid of my glasses. Big wave to everyone, lovely to see you. So look down at your um, band and make sure your feet are parallel. Relax through your shoulders and know where your pelvis is. The first part of your workout is going to be the squats into a roll down plank, reverse back up and repeat. So as I said, we're going to be merciless, but if it's in your back, stop or find a position you know you're good with. So squatting, remember we say the first um, squats of the day are always kind of analysing where the body's at. The body never ever wakes up in the same place and you never keep your alignment, particularly if you're out there in the garden doing lots more walking and all that kind of stuff. So I'm exhaling down to the squat, inhaling back up. Remember you can switch the breath. Just do two more squats, finding your heels as the imprinting position. And on this next one, you'll stay down. And first part of the warm-up prep is exhale to baby tilt. So I'm just reminding you, keep the tilts. The breath out and the pelvic tilt is just the lumbar spine. So you won't see anything moving higher up than your waistband. And you'll feel a lovely stretch in the lower back if you're making that squat happen without squeezing your bum cheeks. Okay, a reminder always, 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 the squat will always have your knees um, just slightly over your ankle joint. Okay, we're gonna move on from here into roll down and into plank, then we're gonna reverse back up again. So listen to the cueing. Big breath out to forwards, bend the ribcage, bottom of the spine. Slow motion, breathe in, you're in forwards bend. 
Breathe out, walk yourself into your long line plank. Stay there, big breath in and out. Feel as though you're using your glutes to pull tight in sideways whilst the legs stretch against the band. Push your bottom back up in the air, bend the legs and tuck your bottom under, breath out to roll that spine back up. Roll your shoulders and inhale your squat. Breathing out, nod and forwards, roll down till you feel both hip, thigh stretched and sitting bones. Walking into your long arm plank, this time lower the knees down and do me four tricep dips. So we're warming up every part of the body, ready for a real big bum time and thigh time. Just do two more tricep dips at elbows back. Go down as far as you can in terms of keeping your chest going forwards on the journey down and up you come. Bring your hands nearer towards your knees, send your bottom up in the air and press your heels down and return that spine, rolling the shoulders. And last time, squat on the inhale, exhaling the bear out that you took in. Stretching the hamstrings for a mini moment, picking up to tiptoe so your ankles raised, and then lowering the knees down. Final prep is the knee hovers to so stay in hovered knees. In here, you can, if you want, pull forward and backwards with your knees hovering. So I've got my back relatively flat. I'm certainly not tucked under at my tailbone end, although you could have your head just down looking at your knees, making sure they're level. But you know, most of all, keep the breath going. Two more moments. Okay, as you finish that one, Walk your hands back, do a final stretch for your hamstrings. Now this stretch for the hamstrings will go right way down into the calf muscle and tuck your bottom under and up you come. So that was your warm up moment. Your first movement pattern with the wide band or the um, leg work is to squat down. So I've got my feet, remember play with your band. If you want to take it, if it's too intense on the knee, you take it further away from the knee. Um, if you've got a particularly tight band, you'll need to have it a bit lower down. So find your squat. Once you're in your squat, get everything level. So you're here, this is, this is the movement. It's very, very simple. Your lumbar spine is flat. You're in your traditional squat. Peel your left foot, or why don't you think, peel the foot nearest the camera, t or TV, and then you're staying in this position. So I'm doing a single kind of, um, it's known as an inner range move, um, making sure I target the leg that's heel down. The leg that's tiptoe is light, my pelvis is level, and the timing goes down and up, down and up. Um, feel it as, as though it's smooth, there's nothing juddery about it. And as you do each one, you still want the feeling of sitting back and back, and more and more of your global hamstring area and your global glute area will get involved. If you're a really disciplined Pilates person, you'll start to feel some of the obliques. So that's taking you straight into your hamstrings, your glutes, and you're gonna slow motion change. If you need to stop sooner, I'm doing around 20 slow motion wake-ups. So I'm now on heel down, for me, the heel nearest the screen. Everything's centered. You could have your hands for, um, to the forehead, in a kind of double salute. The leg that's on tiptoes is just helping me maintain my pelvic stability. Now that you know what you're doing and you're waking up, get the breathing through the obliques, into the heel, push against the ground, breathe. Inhaling and exhaling. Another five, four, three, I hope you're feeling this happening in the back of the thigh, in the side of the bottom, and let that go, and standing up. From that position there, you're going to, um, showing you from the front again, find your squat again, and now you're going to tap the leg to the side, tap. So we start off with the reach, and the reach. Now if you're um, with a really tight band, or really weak side bum area, which would be half of you and half of you, keep going, so it's a one, two so remember it's all of that side spine if you want to put your hands on your abdomen and rib base ribs to remind yourself not to tuck the bottom under so as we keep going here another 10 each side 
you're loading the heel of the standing leg. If you want to alternate the arms, because it helps you be more balanced, then do. Remember that to do this movement pattern, you push your thigh against the band as you step, push the thigh out and back, push the thigh out and back, push the thigh out and back. I appreciate some of you might be looking at the television screen. Once you feel you know what you're doing, you know it's right because the side muscle, part of the hamstring side, side bum area, starts to really get involved. Let's do once more each side. This is the pace. Step out, step legs together, opposite side, step out, step legs together and standing up. Okay, next position, um, showing you from the sides. You're going to do reverse lunge, so step back. And in theory, you're going to go one, step together, and two, step together. So you can see that position. If you're struggling, stay there and just do a smaller, slower range. So just step back, bend both legs, sit back at your hips, step together. So this front leg takes 90% of the load and the pelvic position stays absolutely level. Breathing out and in. Breathing out and in. Yes, the back leg's doing a little bit, but really the front leg is dominant. Just do two more with your front leg taking all of the um, activation. And then one more and stay. Stay here. Check out everything and just do 10 tiny range of move. If you want to put your hands against your chest to stop your chest dropping, keep the load, remember, in this left leg. If it's in your back knee, try and shorten your stride so that you can take it out from here and disperse the load equally. Okay, breathing. And then step together. Are you ready for the other side? So find your lunge. Um, the lunge is such a useful, non-spectacular move, so effective. And we go, step together and lunge back. Legs together, step back and lunge. We did these at the bar. So all of these moves, you could argue, can be practiced at the bar. Should you ever feel bored after this video, you might try them all at the bar. You can also reach your arms as long as the arm positioning. So you step back, sit into your front leg and step back, sit into your front leg and the arm positioning should, um, if anything, just stabilise you a bit more. Use your breath to keep the rib cage oblique, hip bone to hip bone connection. Are you ready? Go back and stay. So you stay, making sure your front knee is not forwards of your ankle. Keep your core, keep the um, rib cage, check out the um, twist and put your thighs out against the band as you then do your 10, sit into, push down the heel to the floor on that front leg. If you want to put your hands on your knees, but don't let those thighs wander in, keep them pulling out sideways, because that's how you end up with a lot work more happening in the abductor here, okay? So if you're a naturally fallen arch person, Susan Hans, Tina Yarmin, um, people like Jean Tiri, Diane, you want to make sure you pull your thigh out. I'm almost falling over because I'm talking. And are you ready? Up to stand. Okay, so that gave you straight away everything that uh, matters in regard to the bum cheek. We're going straight into um, up onto our bridge position. So just to wake up your trunk, roll through the hips and roll back down. So I've got my hands behind me, chest open, legs are tight together giving my glutes a little bit of a moment and and I'm waking up some upper back stability so rather than keeping the brain thinking all that's required in this workout are the legs it's reminding us that the breathing so my crown of my head's reaching to the ceiling my collarbones are wide open ready for the summer strappy tops hope you're wearing yours Ken so my breathing is still dominant okay making that the last one you're going to now go to hands and knees. In hands and knees then, stabilise, find um, thigh 
legs slightly apart, so you've got your um, stability going against the band again. Your back will appear, appear flat, crown of the head reaching. It's the donkey kick, so you let your heel go up in the air and come back down. Now I do this, I've got my leg furthest away from the um, screen, lifting and lowering, staying bent, and my hand nearest the screen on my abdomen, reminding my brain that this is as much about core stability, trunk stabilizers, as it is about the global movement of the hamstring glute. So as you do that heel up and down, you should feel absolutely connected from hip bone to hip bone frontal and connected from bum cheek to back of the knee behind. If you want to put your hand in place, do. I think having that hand, that diagonal hand off, forces you to do a Pilates breath and a Pilates move. Okay, one more. Changing sides. Symmetry, nothing in the lumbar spine, nothing in the sacrum, you've got your other side. First thing to do is set that leg up. Then if you can, bring your hand to the belly, hand to the rib cage, whatever you want to do, or hand to the chest. Whichever way, the arm that you're using, you find your lats and serrats. In other words, find the armpit muscles. Keep the crease of the elbow turned forwards. The movement phase is up and down. Inhaling, exhale, up and slowly down. There's nothing quick about this and as you push the heel up, the pelvis doesn't twist or shift and that's why I encourage really that the opposite diagonal arm comes off the floor because it stops you cheating and going into your neck and forgetting all about your middle and letting it go soggy. So if someone wants to feel my back just now, there's nothing going on there. Everything is in all the right places, protecting the spine whilst working these big stabilizer muscles that need it. Two more. One more. And let that go. Okay. From there, just flip onto your back. First of all, put your feet at the bottom end of your mat and have them wide. And then lay your spine down and then shimmy in the direction of your feet so that you're more, um, got more bent leg, but you know your feet are level um, with the front. Okay, ready for bridging with wide legs. So if you want to put the band a bit further down the thigh, that will give you more activation. If you need to pull the band higher up because you're knackered already, <laughs> we don't understand. So press your heels down, big breath in. Exhale, lift and inhale, lower. I lift and push my knees forwards to lift and lower. If you press against the band as you lift, you're more likely to make the side bottom do the action. So push into your heels, stretch the band and lower down. Breathe, exhale. Heels, stretch the band and lower down. Inhaling, breath out, pelvic floor, so if you start to feel something in your lower back, have a little look and don't come as high. You're probably twisting in the sacrum. If you feel it in your knees, take your heels under your um, knees a bit more and see if that takes it to all the right places. You're lifting the right places, a side bottom and lowering. Exhale, bridge, expand the band, inhale and lower. Breath out, recruit pelvic floor, press into your heels. Stretch the band, inhale and lower. Breathing out, press into your heels. Don't let your ankles roll in. And back down, two more. So I've got a tiny bit of turn up going on on my feet. Last time. And coming back down. So once you've done that movement there, in your bridging, you're going to come up to stand to make sure um, we keep upper body going with the lower body. And we're going to do walking wide. So your feet to be like this. Take it to the width of your mat. <laughs> this is a fab move. Look for your squat, which is here. Have your arms ready and just be glad there's no CCTV. You're walking forwards down your mat and then you're walking backwards down your mat, keeping your legs wide. Effectively, it's a moving squat. Keeping consistent attention and tension activation. 
to side bottom. You can do your legs, arms together. You can be as deep as you want or as tall as you want, okay? We're gonna go there and back once more. So you're going deep, forwards, use your heel, not your toes. Going backwards, you use your toe to pull back to heel, back, back, back. Let's do one more, because I think this is lovely. So heel foot drives you forwards. That's the speed. And then toes lead you back. You still go to your heel, but and let that go, and standing up. That should have felt amazing. Okay, we're going straight to plank again. And in the plank position, we'll start shoulders over pelvis, hollow your abdominals, hover your knees, and take your legs out, and see if you can go as wide as the mat with hands and legs. You've got your knee pull and return. Your knee comes under you, but don't let the hips twist. Don't let the pelvis tuck. Exhaling. Inhale, return. Exhale, really press your hands into the floor. Use your glutes. Use your breath. If it's too intense, you can take the knees to three quarter and just send one leg and return. Do um, so many on one side and then do the same. The other side, if it's too intense, for whatever reason, wrists, shoulders, or you just had enough, you can do the more three quarter position where you're pushing and returning. Okay, making this your last one. So the original position was the plank, knee, plank, knee, lift back, knee towards elbow, but not touching the elbow. Last time here, breathing, smiling, and onto your side. So, ready? Line up yourself on the mat and go down, cradle your head for a moment, uh, rest onto your kind of armpit shoulder area, have your legs bent and then stretch the top leg out. The waist is off the ground on the side I'm lying and you'll lift. So remember this position here is small. You can have the underneath leg as kind of straight or as bent as you want. The rules would go making sure that as you do this small range of movement up and down, that you're actually working through the side bottom. The integrity of the waist is there. You can see daylight between my floor and my waist. And you're flexing at the ankle now deliberately. Inhaling, I'm pushing my heel away and it just pushes against the band of the thigh, presses up against the band as the other thigh pushes down. And I'm gonna stay. I'm now going to bend the knee in the direction of the screen and push the leg away. Big breath in. Exhaling, don't collapse at your waist. Pull that knee forwards and push back. As you pull your knee forwards, bring your heel with you. So it's more of a 90 degree position at the hip. My knee comes forwards. If I look at my direction of pull, I can see my toes as my knee comes forwards. Two more. Breathing, keep that waist. One more, and that should be enough. Are you ready? Other side. So you've got your side lying, going onto your side, and here, and leg reaching. Find your waist away from the floor, and then you've got your lift and lower. So become comfortable with it. The lineup is a neutral spine. The top leg is feeling for the band. The waist is being activated with the breath to make it a true oblique exercise. As I feel for the band, I'm pushing against it. So no swinging the legs, no Rosemary Connolly. You could have your arm reaching. There's lots of things you could do with the upper body to keep the chest open. Okay, and if you're really tired in the neck, you can put a block under your head. From there then we have our knee bend. So you pull your knee forwards, taking the foot with you, nine degree moment, and push it away. Just be conscious that as your knee come for, comes forwards, your waist doesn't collapse and neither does your leg drop down. Your waist stays and you push away. So pulling the knee forwards and pressing the heel away. Pull the knee forwards, pelvis stays absolutely level, top to bottom, pushing away. I've used the side of the mat to get my line up, 
pull that thigh forwards, press back, feeling the abductor side bottom. Let's go one more. Keep the tension against the band and do one more because that felt great. Remember that knee can't drop, that thigh has to imagine pressing against gravity and then let that leg lower down. You're gonna go back to all fours. Okay, final part of this sequence. All fours for hovering, breathe. Exhale, hover. Inhaling and exhaling here. So in this position, keep the breath going. Um, the idea is that you'll get your obliques switched on. And you should be nicely warmed up, so it should be a pleasant scenario. Keep the breathing going. Breathe, 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 breathe. And then lower down. Stand up. Your final activity with this band is in standing. You're going to do the crab walk. So um, some people have done this with me in one-to-ones. It's a side, almost together, side, together. I'm in a squat, hinge at the hip position. I'm going to go back. I squat and step the thigh pushes against the band. It's as though the leg that's pushing out sideways is clearing something on the floor. Your pelvis stays absolutely true. And we're going from one end to the mat. And then back to the other. If you're really intense, you could have your arms so that the um, double salute with the upper body area. That brings you more obliques. How are you feeling? If you don't have the space in the house, you simply do step together, step apart. Step apart, step together, step apart, step together. Okay, just four more, whether you're traveling down your mat, and it should go straight into the abductors, um, different um, parts of the abductor than we've done already. Shall we do one more journey back again? Exhaling and go, and go and go and go okay stay there stay sit into your bottom muscles keep the band pushing against um or thighs pushing against band and roll down hang down there breathe 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 and tuck your bottom under and discard your band okay ready for part two which is your upper body so we're going to go straight into your press-up position and you're going to have a wide squat as a, a wide arm position. So your press-up position start with this here. So standing with your standing, all fours with your knees um, in the all fours position, but hands are wide, okay? Have a breather. I probably started going really quickly. Um, I get excited when I get energized. So in here, you've got your chest press, elbows wide, so remember I said today was booty band and upper body. So that's what we're doing. We're doing booty band, we've done that, and now we're doing the upper body. So you end up immediately training into everything across the upper back. As long as you keep your obliques active with the breathing out, in other words, you're making sure that your all fours position um, is supported. So stay where you are, keep your elbows slightly bent, tuck your toes under, and then lift the knees up an inch and down. Exhale, keep the elbows slightly bent as you flow up and down. Remember, it's a breathing out breath. The spine is in flat or effectively neutral, but not dipped and tucked under. Two more, your head can be hanging, but your shoulders have to be forwards of your fingers almost. One more. And bring your hands narrower and you've got your, short, your tricep dip. So you're going to go bend and push. It doesn't matter where you don't go. It's about the journey, direction is forwards, shoulders to fingertips. Feel as though your armpit connect. Push through the outside of the hand as you're pushing back up. Spread your fingers. Make all of these um, adjustments as I cue them. Exhaling. Elbows pull back. Let's go two more. Elbows are back. This is more tricep than it is um, anything. Last one. And let that go. Okay, from that position there, you're going to go into your um, breaststroke position. So you'd be on your front, lying flat, 
So breaststroke, um, have your either legs, legs are apart no matter what, they can be turned out if you tighten the um, lower back, do that. Your hands are gonna start with your palms flat, lined up where the ears are, okay, and exhaling, core connect, and hover your nose off the mat, reach the crown head forwards, and then take your arms up like this, and lower them back down. Think of your middle shoulder blade area squeezing together as you lower and lift. I'm gonna show you off. So you're here lying on your front and you pull your arms back and. So you actually can do it like this. So if it's too intense for you, your elbows are lower than your armpits, okay? If you don't pull the ribs in, you'll get a faulty shoulder move. Just do four more. Up we go, legs are reaching, glutes are active. Two more. Can you feel the work around the back of the upper body? And one more. Okay, now you're in dart. So keep your hands reaching like you're on a march. Big breath in, exhale and up you go. And now bend at your elbows and push. So as you keep this position here and press, it's like you're doing a tricep dip. Inhaling, exhale. If you want to put your head down but don't collapse everywhere, you can. Keep your pubic bone dominant. If you can get this workout going on, you'll end up using weights. We can actually take you down and pull you up, lowering through the thoracic. But you can only do the double movement, i.e. the chest raise and hands reaching, elbows bend, elbows extend, if it's not in your lower back. Two more, one more, and let that go. Okay, so from that position there, you're going to come onto your sitting muscles, sitting bones, not muscle, well, both actually. Make sure they're level, you're gonna hate this. Okay, I'm going to teach at a moderate level, okay? So your hands are going to go. I, I always have my hands pointing away from the shoulder just because it gives me a more open shoulder. Relax, the, um, turn the crease of the elbow in, press down onto your feet and lift. So lifting, check both knees level and lower. So the activity is about you stabilising through the upper back and lifting and lowering, you should feel the hamstring so if you push equally through both heels um, from the foot position, if you check out your knees and you push into the outside of the hand, you'll get everything you need and the whole of the upper back's working. The whole of the breathing out to come up, inhale and down. Don't worry if all you can do is a little bit of lift. The beauty of this move is the hamstrings feed you from the posterior, the bum to heel position. The obliques feed you up to your front of your armpit. And then if you keep your chest open, the tricep, that's the back of the upper arm, and the rhomboid mids, that's between your shoulder blades, get woken up as well. Again, ready for that summer in social, social isolation. It'll be the first summer when everyone will look amazing, but there's no one to look at you. Not a bad thing, hey? Okay, let that tricep get dip go. You can stay in position. I'm just going to show you where we're going. We're going to the Russian twist, which will give us the wasted type of muscles. So you lean back. The twist I'm going to suggest is here and centre and here. If that starts to go well, we'll kind of add more rhythm. You're going to turn sideways, so make sure you find your off the sitting bone position. In other words, make sure everything's level. It can't be in your sacrum at this point. If it is, you'll just have to sit taller, or maybe even do the 100 position lying down. But ideally, this is to get your waist. Open the chest. I'm going to pull my elbow back. Let's say tap the floor. Go back to my thigh. Turn, tap the floor, back to my thigh. I'm doing one side. Exhaling, inhale back to my thigh, checking my thighs don't move, exhale to rotate, inhale to return. If you start to feel shearing forces in the sacrum, 
you're twisting from your pelvis, so twist from your shoulders. In fact, if you pull your shoulders, does that make more sense to you? Shoulders. So you turn your head in the direction of the twist. Turn the head. So remember, if it's going into the sacrum, your twist is going too deep down the spine. Rotation muscles, rotated spine positions are always rib cage to shoulder. Now if you're doing this effectively, whatever arms you're doing, you should be getting a bit of a ringing out area, rib cage to waistband. If it's all in the wrong place, remember what I said, go to your 100 position and get your abdominals to fire up that way. We're just going to do four more each side. I'm pulling my shoulders, turning my head. Exhaling, shoulders and head. Exhaling and head. Exhaling and head. Exhaling and then coming down. Pull your knees in and that should have felt lovely. Okay, we have a side plank position. So here, in we go. Exhaling, up you go. Take your leg in side plank. Take your other leg and lowering and up. Breathe, lowering and up. Breathe, lowering. So it's single arm stabilization. Two more. One more, and then pull the legs back to the other side you go. I'm going to show you how you can do this without it being too intense. So if you're struggling, you can go up, the hands in place as well, or you can keep your hand in place. Um, you can take your feet slightly further away from each other. All that matters is that as you lower, you use your armpit. Remember also you can keep the underneath leg down, lift and lower. Notice my shoulder does not go in the direction of my ear. So I'm keeping these lats, some of the triceps, pelvis stays neutral. It's not a cheat to end up on the shin of your underneath leg. You can see that diagonal line, can't you? Okay, and it's not a cheat to help the body lift and lower. Okay, after that side plank, you're ready for your child's pose. So I'm just going to pull my bottom back. Reach your hands forwards as far as the shoulder will let them. And then walk it. Bend your elbows. And you're getting into the upper spine. Okay, I'm going to pull myself forwards. And Find the cobra type shape, big breath in, exhaling my hands are wide, up I go, into extension, firing up the glutes, and breathing out, I'll bend my elbows to lay the abdomen down, big breath in. Exhale, push with the outside of the hand, find your armpits, it's not the hands pushing you, it's your armpits and back of the shoulder, crown the head to the ceiling, neck lovely long, glutes pulling right up, you can be right up your thigh. And last time, big breath. Up into that lovely, lovely length and stretch. And okay, onto your back for the final position, which is glutes. You're lying down on your mat. Um, at this point, feel everything symmetrical. Side it down to onto the thigh and lift. Now, because there's so many people doing these workouts every day, it isn't mandatory, but why wouldn't you if you have the time? Uh, but for those that can't do them every day, don't get panicked. Some people aren't having to work, and other people's work allows this to happen. There's no keeping up with anyone. It's more about making sure that when you want to do Pilates, you can actually do Pilates safely. So the studio offers, whether it's through live stream Facebook or ultimately Zoom, we offer teaching you safely rather than expecting you know how to do everything. So that's the glute stretch. Take the legs straight. That's, um, so I've now got um, 
ankle onto the side of the thigh, legs straight up to the ceiling, and I'm getting a, an increased stretch. Remember if that's in your knee joint of the leg that's bent, simply pull that leg further over. So you end up there, both legs bend, put your other foot down to the floor, open, creating that bit of a triangle, pelvis is level and in neutral, and up you come. Uh, the more you assist but push out against the thigh area, the more mobilization you'll get through the side bottom. All of those muscles that, because of what we've been doing, they're definitely getting tight to people, okay? They're getting tight because they're getting strong, but don't um, forsake uh, making sure you stretch out. So this is now the leg straight part. And again, if you want to push that bent leg further over your thigh, do so. Try and resist twisting. So keep kind of pushing against the bent leg and you get massive, massive stretch and then let those go. And all I can say is, once again, thank you ever so much for participating and keep telling me what you want. We've got one more day tomorrow before we uh, actually close. We're gonna close for a week to completely get back office work done, um, the databases, etc., etc., etc. So anyway, right now, um, have a great day. Enjoy the sun, stay well. Hope you all stay really safe and active and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Goodbye for now and... <clears throat>